Let's take a look at how Zeta radically simplifies the way developers work with data. For that, we're gonna switch over here to the laptop. And what we have here is a empty workspace. We're gonna add a database, insert some data, and query it. Let's go. So we'll add a database, we'll call it blog. I really like the pink color, and we'll create that. Now, as soon as we create the database, it's ready to go. We can already um, add some data and query it. To add data, we're gonna go here and choose create a demo database. Now this is gonna scaffold for us a blog style database with users and posts. In this, we can see support for rich data types on Zeta. We have an ID type that is unique, we have a name, and we have an email type. And the email type um, actually validates that something is an email. So if we try to enter something invalid here, um, Zeta will enforce consistency at the database level, which is really, really nice. Um, if we go over to the posts table, we can see even more rich types like labels, um, links, etc. We can use the schema view to look at how our data is connected. So these, this is our schema at large, and we can visualize that posts here depends on users in this way. The, the author column joins these tables. Now, um, what we want to do is query this, right? So let's go to users and filter for all users with an, a lowercase i in their name. So let's type this. Okay, we now have a subset. And what we wanna do is sort this in reverse alphabetical order. So from Z to A. All right, so we've got Viva Moan who's, who's starting us off. Um, and, and all these extra columns, I don't really need them in my app. They're gonna make it a bit slow. So let's, let's well, you know, deselect all the columns and just get the names. Great, I'm getting a list of names. Um, what we're going to do is get a code snippet that we can use in our apps to query it. Um, we can use TypeScript or JavaScript or Shell or whatever we want. I'm going to go with the TypeScript SDK here. Uh, and we're going to copy the snippet and take it over to the playground where we can query Zeta in real time and validate code. Um, so let's go over here and I'm just going to paste that snippet and we will run the code right here. So now this is going to run the code and hopefully um, come back with, great, it's, it's a list of our names, Viva, Vincent, exactly in the same order that we filtered. Fantastic, let's run that one more time. Now, since this is TypeScript, it's actually type safe, so we cannot make a mistake on like the, the name of the table or it's going to warn us. We cannot make a mistake on the type of the columns or it's going to warn us. We, can, we actually have auto-completion on the other columns here using TypeScript's IntelliSense features, um, name or ID or email, um, and we have the auto-completion here. So everything is geared to giving us consistency and safety as we query Zeta. But Zeta is more than just a data store and an API. Zeta exposes a search engine that is leaps and bounds more powerful than the built-in search engines we see in some databases today. And we'd love to show you that. Um, our search engine has support for typo tolerance, fuzzy matching, um, and also boosters. Um, and let, let's take a look at that because it's, it's definitely something very, very powerful we'd like to show you. So if we go to the search engine, um, let's try and search for a blog post. Now, if we go to posts and look at text, right? Um, the long text type, by the way, can also be edited here in line. Pretty cool. Uh, let's take a look at some word that we're looking for, inventory. All right, so I'm going to do a search for this term across our, <laughs> across our database. Inventory. I think that's the word. So now we have multiple matches. And what you can see is there's a relevance assigned to each match, trying to guess what the user is looking for. Um, we can use the notion of boosters in Zeta to not just serve results that match a search term, but results that match a search term and are boosted by another parameter in the table. So we don't just, we can, for example, not just serve posts that match inventory, but the most viewed post that matches inventory. So if we go over here to posts, there's a column called views, right? So we can choose to show the matching inventory post that is viewed the most. And we can do this using a booster. So we click on boost, we add a booster of numeric type. We choose the numeric column views. And now um, every view boosts the relevancy. You can see that relevancy go up. Um, so now the most viewed blog post that matches the term is going to be first. And it's going to be in diminishing order where the view boosts the relevancy. We could even surface the latest one if we do a date booster and sort by when the, when the post was created. 
Um, we can boost search results to give our users intelligent and, and kind of the content that they want to see. Um, but what if a user makes a typo? What if instead of inventory, it's inventory? You know, this is going to probably, yeah, this is going to mess up our search. But Zeta has support for typo tolerance. So if we go to settings, fuzziness, we can tell Zeta between one or two how many, cal how many characters of offness or typo to tolerate. So combining typo tolerance, com com combining typo tolerance and boosters, we're able to provide a search experience that is far superior to what's on the market today. Uh, but let's, let's, let's go a step further. Let's use this in an application. So what we're gonna do is get a code snippet of our search string and actually use it in a project. So uh, we'll set up a local project using our command line to use Zeta. We'll start with the CLI, we'll copy the snippet, we'll go over here and paste it, and we'll run the install. And as soon as the install finishes, uh, we can paste that next snippet, which is initialize a database. So we'll clear the terminal and paste the initialization here. Um, and it's going to ask us some questions. Do you want to use code generation? Yes, I do. I want TypeScript code. Um, choose the output file. This will just be zeta.ts. And it will install the TypeScript SDK for us as we go. Um, once the TypeScript SDK is installed, it'll ask us some more questions about the branch of our database. Do you want a .env file? Yes. Um, and now we're all set and ready to go. So if we open Visual Studio Code to look at what just happened, we have a new file called zeta.ts with a lot of type definitions that is ready for us to use. Let's use it. So we'll create a new file. We'll call it getdata.ts. Um, we're gonna need to read an environment variable, so we'll install a project called .env that'll help us do that. And we'll import .env from .env. We'll configure it here. Um, and then we'll instantiate a new Zeta client. So we'll, or let's just call it Zeta. Let's say new Zeta client. Um, and we'll give it an API key. We don't, we don't need this one, we need Zeta client from the generated code, which is at dot slash Zeta. We'll say API key is process.env.zeta API key. This was generated for us. So now that we have this, let's try and run this code snippet from here using the SDK. So we'll zeta.search.all exactly as we get it, but when it finishes, we'll console log the result just to see what's happening. This looks good. Uh, let's go here, make sure we're running a good version of Node.js, and now we will npx tsx get data.ts. Um, if we run this, it'll query Zeta and hopefully give us the search results that we want. So as you can see, we get back posts, we get back voluptate, enemy, voluptas, whatever, um, record CD8422 as the first one, um, which is CD8422, that's the first one there. So we get back the data exactly as we see it here in our application. And again, since it's generated using the Zeta CLI, we really have all the safety in the world. If a table use first doesn't exist, it tells us. If a table doesn't exist, it's like, hey, you don't have this table. We have type safety on the columns, including auto completion as well. Um, fuzziness, all of this is completely safe and ready to use in our applications. Now, um, Zeta is a branchable database as well, meaning migrations become zero downtime and predictable. Um, and, and if we wanted to, um, here, if we wanted to create a new feature, we'd add a branch called new feature. And instantly, um, a new branch is created that forks the schema, but not the data for security and privacy. So if we now want to add a table called scores, um, and if we go to users and you know add a column, uh, a date type, date of birth, for example, our, our schema has changed. So if we go to schema here, we'll see we have a table scores, we've got date of birth, and if we switch our schema, a branch back to the main, um, we, we don't have those tables. So we, we have alternate versions of this thing where we can now send traffic to a branch and validate that it works, and when we're ready, we can open a migration request, invite our team to collaborate, leave comments in line, just like GitHub, and when everything's approved, we merge the branch to main, triggering a migration that happens without downtime. Um, that's the vision, that's the product we're working on, and we're really excited about this next level of managed serverless data infrastructure, the data platform for builders. With that, thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.